So now you know that you're an INJ and you know that you have extroverted sensing as your inferior function. Now what? What's up team, it's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. So this video is here to give you a little technique. It might seem extremely obvious for you. Um, that's going to help you along your daily journey so that extroverted sensing just doesn't boom surprise you right it doesn't come out in the worst situation and you get stuck in it and you can't escape and you feel overwhelmed by everything that's going on around you okay so remember this is to <laughs> as as I'm sure you know like it's important to have foresight for where things are going you know, so that things don't sneak up on you. That's why I call you the insightful or clairvoyant mystic as a character, right? That's because it's, it's looking at that long timeline of seeing where things are going and being prepared for that and being able to um, protect yourself from that psychic garbage that gets dumped on you, right? And everybody's walking around, you're picking up all these signs of uh, just horrible things and people's body language and bad behaviors and bad minds. <laughs> and so this is going to hopefully give you a little bit of daily de-stressing. Okay, it's something that I tried to use. I'm an INFP, so I have a little different blend of having to deal with extroverted sensing. Um, but what you can do is just take a moment, take that big breath, and start with your toes and feel your toes. Feel your toes in your socks, on the ground, um, possibly in your shoe. Start to go up your leg and feel your pant leg on your thigh, and then your belt, whatever you got going on, and your shirt. You're feeling the texture. You're getting into your present experience and continue to go up. You know, if you have a, a watch or anything on, feel that. Just engage in your body. Okay, once you get all the way up to your head, try going to your other senses. You know, do you smell anything around you? Can you zoom in on a detail like a crease or a cut on a table or something like that, a crinkle in the curtains. Any sounds you hear really get into the sensations. Of course, you don't need to do that every time. You don't need to go through all of those. But what you're doing is just grounding yourself in your body. And it all starts with that first breath, though. You got to take that first breath and then just lock into one of your senses the best you can and try to experience it as much as possible and then move on continue with your day you do it enough it's going to build up more rapport more connection more energy around extroverted sensing and it's going to let you tap into that extroverted realm a lot easier without making it a stress point, without making it something that you don't want to do or something that you think is, is just not who you are. And it's going to let you connect more in with your auxiliary function as well. If you're an INTJ, it's going to help you connect to extroverted thinking a bit more because you're just more comfortable with that outer world. Or if you're an INFJ, it's going to help you connect with extroverted feeling and uh, help build those bridges between people that Know, maintains relationships and whatnot. So this is this is kind of a backwards way of going through it. You know, most people say go to your auxiliary and use that as the bridge to your inferior. And I, I agree, that's a really good thing. But this is to help you de-stress. Okay, and throughout the day. Okay, so please let me know down below um, if you try this and it helps or if you've done this before. And also if you have any other tips, tricks, techniques or INJs dealing with extroverted sensing in a, in a healthier way, using it to de-stress so that your mind doesn't struggle with that flip, that toggle switch as much. All right, keep up the lifelong questing. Good luck, have fun. Peace.